Good day and a very warm welcome to this special broadcast of Mandela Day. Today the country and indeed the whole world is celebrating former President Nelson Mandela's 94th birthday. In November 2009, the United Nations General Assembly declared the 18th of July Nelson Mandela International Day. This was in recognition of Madiba's sterling contribution to the achievement of justice, freedom, and democracy in our country. Since then, Madiba's birthday has become an international day of celebration and motivation for doing good, inspiring individuals to take actions based on Madiba's model behavior. Now for the next two hours, we'll be crossing live to our reporters in various cities and towns, bringing you what individuals and organizations will be doing today for 67 minutes in honor of the 67 years that Nelson Mandela has given to the service of humanity. Now the SABC's senior political correspondent, Tammy Dixon, takes a quick look at some of Mandela's rare qualities that have defined his inspiring leadership. For almost three decades that Mandela was languishing in apartheid jails, he was never forgotten. Neither was this country ever governable, nor politically and economically stable. That the government has taken a firm decision to release Mr. Mandela unconditionally. It was a game-changing political decision that marked the beginning of the end of the brutal and racist apartheid system. Indeed, exactly nine days after de Klerk's inevitable decision, Mandela majestically walked out of the Victor Foster prison gates in the Western Cape after painful 27 years of incarceration. But the veterans of South African struggle for liberation insist that the apartheid government did not embark on these reforms voluntarily. It was forced to do so by the unrelenting struggles of the oppressed people of this country, together with the increasing isolation by the international community. Although Mandela has always been respected for his shrewd political leadership, grace and charisma, even before he was incarcerated, it was after his release from prison that his real leadership qualities were put to real test. This as he carefully embarked on a delicate and complex political process that sought to create a new South Africa. His pursuit for reconciliation also saw him stretching his hand of peace to people who were largely responsible for his suffering. A visionary who understood that the status quo and all that went with it during the times of apartheid needed to change and that he himself needed to lead. Even on the face of that daunting task, Matiba continued to exude inspiration and political maturity. He has always been focused, resolute and clear about what the next step ought to be. Even as he left this prison into the bigger prison which was South Africa of that day, he was clear in his mind as to what the next step ought to be in order for us to attain the society and ideal that he was prepared to die for. Despite his commitment to peace, Mandela's release from prison and the unbending of liberation movement sparked a vicious political violence, however, especially in KwaZulu-Natal. <laughs> Scores of people lost their lives. With the violence, as it was at the time, this low intense proceeding was it. Uh, cost us so many lives that uh, that would help. His, his presence, I thought, was going to mean much. But you can see that he was, in another sense, a captive in that he was dictated to by those who had not been in prison with him and by the UDF. And he didn't do things as he wanted to. Amid concerns for his safety, Mandela once again bravely led from the front and went to KZN to intervene in what had become a low-level civil war that also threatened to derail the sensitive negotiations process. Take your guns! your knives and your pangos 
and throw them into the sea. It took a while for the message to sink, but the fact that he could make it at that time is a mark of very rare leadership because we had a lot of debate uh, internally. The tragic assassination of another people's hero, Chris Hani, in 1993, again saw Mandela stepping in, bringing his leadership qualities to the fore as he sought to prevent what could have engulfed this country into a civil war. I am reaching out to every single South African, black and white, from the very depths of my being. Mandela also took unpopular decisions even within his party, the ANC. Some of those decisions sparked internal tensions and resistance, such as the suspension of the armed struggle. But Madiba was very, very firm as a leader and was a visionary that it was important at that time that we actually suspend the armed struggle despite the difficulties. Even though Mandela has long left the public stage, many argue that this country will forever be indebted to him. What really we've got to do as a country is to say... Uh, what, what, what are the values that he stood for? What kind of vision did he have? And how far are we in terms of the pursuit of that vision and so on, uh, in terms of respect uh, for those values, uh, in order to make sure that we, we then do the, the right thing, which is uh, things that, uh, of which, which Madiba would be proud, which would really be... Um, to help us to sustain his legacy. And there is also a warning that people should not use Mandela's name for their own selfish interests. Those who say that they will do it the Mandela way should respect the country's assets and its money, have nothing to do with corruption, expose it, punish it, use the money for proper purposes and that would please Nelson Mandela and his spirit. With Matiba having played his role, the challenge now facing the current generation of leaders is to translate the political power he fought for and achieved to economic freedom to improve the quality of life of many poor people. Tommy Dixon, SABC News. Well, this year's main event will be held in Dinukana near Zirast in the northwest. Our reporter, Tommy Dixon, again, is, of course, there to cover the event. We will be crossing to him um, a few minutes from now. But, um, of course, as you would have seen from our broadcast early this morning, Morning Live had a three-hour broadcast where South Africans from all walks of life were talking about and showing uh, some of the things that they have done and the things that they continue to do to honor this uh, big uh, South African, this great uh, South African who has left quite a legacy for uh, the whole of humanity across the world. Let's cross over now to Tammy Dixon, who is in uh, Ziras, to get a sense of what is happening there at that main event. Ngoska Kulu Vuyo, Spaming has been in Chigaswam, Squam Kele Apa, Klum Saba, was a northwest, Kletulo Piasa, Ziras, the Slapaka Yugundao, Ababiza, Itinoka, Nanjamba Bona, Indawente, Kakul Lena, Enembali, Kebileo, Kunku Kutabi, Lukula, and Kuleko, and Sans Africa. Rich history indeed in this place, as we all know that uh, it is uh, a place that is like just about 40 kilometers uh, to the border that separates South Africa and Botswana. And uh, this was was an area that was used during the, uh, the struggle against apartheid uh, as a, a gateway to Botswana for those activists who were uh, uh, crossing over uh, the country, skipping the country in order to join the military activities of Umkondo Esizu at the time, who were fighting uh, the apartheid system. We're here at this stadium. It's called Dinogana Stadium. Quite a lot of people who have come to attend this event today, a very, very uh, special event 
night indeed where the whole country and the whole world is celebrating uh, not only the 94th birthday of uh, uh, our hero Nelson Mandela but also uh, honoring the work that he has done in social justice, in fighting for freedom, in, 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 in creating unity in the country, a peacemaker and really a revolutionary. A lot of people have come. The, the event is about to get underway. Uh, we were expecting that uh, President Zuma will be leading this dele- delegation to come here and uh, lead this event here. But uh, as we know that uh, President Zuma will not be attending this event, will not be addressing it as was scheduled before because he is out of the country, is attending uh, equally a very important event in China where he is continuing to strengthen relations between South Africa and China. And uh, that happens in the context of South Africa trying really to make an influence within uh, uh, the BRICS countries which are an emerging economic bloc uh, in the world that continues to take its place as we know that uh, uh, the global relations of economy are now changing. But his uh, uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture, uh, Mr. Paul Mashadile will then be uh, replacing him and be delivering a keynote address here at this event uh, to make us understand as to what is it exactly that all of us here in South Africa have to do to make sure that uh, we continue uh, to hold Mandela's legacy. Joining me now to talk further about uh, this event here in Tinogana is the special advisor to the Minister of Arts and Culture, Paul Mashadile, uh, who's going to help us to understand much better this event here today. His name is Tudu Zimbada. He's going to help us to understand this event here today. Tudu, thank you very much for joining us. It's our pleasure uh, to have you here. Now, this event here in, in Tinogana, uh, it's, a, it's a main event, right, uh, of all the events that will be taking place in the country uh, celebrating Nelson Mandela. But tell us more about that. Yes, it is. Uh, actually, it's not just about today, because since the beginning of the week, many departments have been doing good work, uh, providing service to those who are in need, who have gone to schools, painted schools, donated books, hosted the flag because indeed uh, this is about nation building. The celebration of the life of Nelson Mandela, uh, our icon, is to celebrate and build on the foundation that he did. He started in 1994. And it, it also goes out through other countries and around the world, obviously, is correct? Yes, uh, this is a world event. Uh, it's not just about uh, our country, South Africa. The whole continent is celebrating Mandela. The world is celebrating Mandela. And we are pleased as a South African nation that we could produce produce a leader of Mandela's caliber. And we've been saying to all the children as we're visiting schools that let us enumerate uh, the life of Mandela, work hard to make sure that we produce more of Madibas in the future. Now, many people are saying 67 minutes. What is it really compared to what Mandela has given uh, to this country in terms of what it did for social justice and so on? What is it that uh, people should indeed be doing uh, to ensure that they continue to sustain Mandela's legacy? To sustain Mandela's legacy, you must be worried about your neighbor. You must be worried about the person that is next to you. And that's why we are saying as part of the values of Ubuntu, values of humility, respect, dignity, many of us must go out there and say, what can I do to make a change and make sure that uh, as much as many people, their lives are changed for the better. Why Tinokana? Why this area? Uh, 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 which is like uh, far removed, I can see it's a mountainous area. Why was it chosen to hold what is known as the main celebration of Nelson Mandela's Day? We must reach all the people of the country, and that's why we came to the Nukane. But also the Nukane has a lot of what we call the Lutuli detachment. Madiba himself, who used to pass, pass through here when he went to exile. And there are many veterans who have fought against apartheid. But also, we must change the lives of rural communities because uh, many of our people who are hard hit by poverty, you find them in rural communities. And that's why we spend the whole week here making sure that, in particular, education of children is improved and is improved for the better. Thank you very much, Mr. 
It's our pleasure. Well, that's um, Dudu Zimbata, who is coming as the special advisor to the Minister of Arts and Culture, Paul Mashatile, helping us to understand really the essence of this event here uh, in Tinokana and also explaining as to why this place was uh, uh, chosen to hold uh, this event today, saying that it's a gateway, or rather it used to be a gateway uh, from South Africa to Botswana for the military activists of the ANC who were skipping the country to continue to fight uh, for, for freedom in South Africa. In fact, we also do know that uh, President Zuma himself, uh, way back in 1963, he was in fact arrested exactly here in Zirast when he was trying to cross over uh, from South Africa to Botswana. But he was arrested. As a result, he spent 10 years in exile, or rather in Robben Island, after he was arrested here in 1963. Well, I'm not alone here in Tinokana Stadium. I'm together with my colleague, uh, Chriselda Lewis, who is also on the other side of the stadium. She's going to tell us now about that which uh, she sees that side. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tommy, and of course, uh, very good afternoon to the viewers at home. Welcome to the west side of the Dinokana Stadium. This is where the official government celebration is taking place, celebrating the 94th birthday. Seven minutes. Are you going to paint a school? Are you going to paint a community center? Alright, thank you very much, my lady. Uh, as you can see here, Vuyo uh, uh, as well, that people very excited here, coming to celebrate with this world icon. We'll speak to uh, many more people, uh, but uh, later in this broadcast, broadcast, let's take it back to you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chriselda. Chriselda, uh, talking to ordinary people who have come through here also to observe uh, this very, very important day, not only for South Africa, but uh, for the world at large. The program has gotten underway now here, and uh, the leader of uh, uh, United Democratic Movement, the UDM, Bandu Olomisa, is on stage now. Uh, like all other leaders of political parties, they are represented here. They will be given an opportunity to also express their views, also to wish uh, President Mandela a happy birthday today and also uh, give us an, uh, their understanding of that which we need to do as a country to ensure that we continue to sustain Mandela's legacy. Let's take it back now to Fuyo in Johannesburg. Thanks there to Tommy Dixon and uh, Chris Selda Lewis coming to you live from Zirast, where, of course, the main uh, uh, function that has been organized by the South African government is uh, currently underway. Well, as I'm sure you would have noticed by now, even before International Mandela Day, 
South Africans had already started heeding the call to dedicate 67 minutes to doing good. Across the country, people have been donating their time to help those less fortunate. But how did this noble idea come about? Here's a quick look. Following the success of Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday celebrations in Hyde Park, London, it was soon decided that future celebrations should constitute individuals and organizations voluntarily partaking in a range of activities for the good of the fellow men. Thus, the 67 Minutes concept was born. When he spoke before this huge global audience, he said, it's in your hands. And uh, we were backstage and we were wondering about this. So we asked him afterwards, my diva, did you make a mistake? He said, no, I was giving everybody a message and I'm giving you a message. He actually f called in his speech on the next generation of leaders to take responsibility for addressing all the challenges that the world faces. The main objective of Mandela Day is to simply inspire individuals to take action, to help change the world for the better, and in so doing, becoming part of the global movement for good. This is not about one day. This is about making every day a Mandela Day and making every day, uh, working with and within communities, part of your everyday life. From helping with the refurbishing of schools to the caring for the elderly, activities vary. We are going to give our 67 minutes uh, giving away blankets and there's going to be a concert in Jamiston where we are actually donating blankets to Jerusalem in um, informal settlement. We will, when I say we, I mean me and the team here at 5FM Mornings, we'll be heading up to Headway, which is the charity which I am a patron for and which I've supported. Uh, Headway do amazing work with people who are suffering from brain injuries. <laughs> But what difference does one day really make? The intention was to start by creating a psychological difference. And the psychological difference is get people to think particularly at community level, and ask themselves, what can I do for myself? And you see this happen, and from our experience in the school building program that Madiba initiated, is you have to involve those communities, and this is what they are doing. They are now reaching out, not only to the school authorities, the principal, but to the communities itself. So those communities become involved. And when you involve communities in solutions like that, you will see the difference, how they become interested in those programs, how they actually take ownership of it. And this, I think, is what we are looking for, is a catalyst that will change the way the people think. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That are fought for social justice for 67 years. So how about starting your journey with only 67 minutes? Dumiso Mashaba, SABC News, Johannesburg. How would you like money going into your purse when you shop? It could happen to you. Win your share of a million rand in groceries back from Rick Coffee and Cremora. Buy any Rick Coffee and Cremora pack, dial the number on screen and follow the prompts to enter. Wait for your reply and you could win the full value of your shopping pack in cash. Rick Coffee and Cremora, perfect partners for the perfect prizes. Cheers. <laughs> wow. Madiba. Big Madiba. Well, he is, of course, today spending the day very privately with family and friends at his home in Kuno in the Eastern Cape. In and around Kuno, though, villagers are already 
in a festive mood, celebrating the 94th birthday of an icon who, through his presence in and around them, has put Kunu on the global map. We now cross live to our reporter in Kunu, Lumko Jimlongo. Good afternoon, Lumko. the Eastern Cape, where we are broadcasting from the Nelson Mandela Museum here at Kunu. Now, what, as you said, festivities have been going on since the early morning here today, and what you're seeing on your screens are some of the just the festivities underway here in Kunu. You'll remember that Nelson Mandela has always had a soft spot for children and youth development, and that's why the kids have come to say happy birthday to him. But he himself is at the house you're seeing at the screen now. That is the Mandela family home, and that is where he is spending his birthday with close family and, rel- uh, 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 and close colleagues of his and we've seen various statements that we saw Bill Clinton come in um, yesterday to also wish Matiba a happy birthday. Now he's just one of the dignitaries that have come. And that's Uno there is where Nelson Mandela is spending his retirement as well. It's a place he holds dear to his heart. You'll remember he grew up there and he's come back to retire there, sort of coming full circle. And that's where he's spending time with his children. Now we've also seen various things happening here at the museum. There's been a two-day colloquial that's going on where various people have come in and they're talking to the fact that how do we preserve and how do we keep alive the, 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 the legacy of Nelson Mandela. Now, talking of family and Mr. Mandela spending the day with family, I'm now joined by his grandson, Ndaba Mandela. Ndaba, family has always been important to Dr. Mandela. Can you just briefly tell me, what does this day mean to you as a family? Um, this day really uh, represents a, a day whereby the, the family comes together and unites to celebrate uh, the special day uh, of our grandfather. You know, uh, traditionally... Uh, our our family has always been scattered across Joburg, you know, because obviously my grandfather has gotten married three different times. So, you know, the family is quite large. So this this is an occasion where we really all gather under one roof and celebrate the special day. Now, you've have, have, I understand you've also been having a, a, a private function at home. Can you just briefly talk to us about that? How is that a feeling today? What has been happening there in the house? Well, as you can imagine, there's been quite a few uh, visitors uh, from, uh, you know, judges, from generals, uh, from the different, uh, you know, people, really, uh, from across the country. And uh, right now, we've been, uh, it's been quite, uh, it's quite in a frenzy, I would say. You know, the, the people have brought in the cake, they're assembling all the tables, you know, so this afternoon we'll be having a, a lunch, a late lunch, because my grandfather, you know, has lunch on about three, between three and four. So that's when we're going to have the the big occasion. Okay, any sort of family traditions that you speak to say? Do you get around? Do you sing for him? What do you do traditionally on this day every year? Um, there's nothing really specific that we do, you know, besides uh, really just coming together. And, uh, and uh, obviously there'll be speeches, there'll be those messages that are, you know, coming straight from the family, uh, from the grandchildren, his great-grandchildren over present. And the most uh, amazing thing, you know, about our grandfather is that he loves children. And when he really sees, you know, especially the little ones, he really lights up. So that's really what, we, what, 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 what is going to be there for him. All right, then there's finally talking about messages from grandchildren, whatever. What is your message to your grandfather as he turns 94 today? For me, I would say, uh, Granddad, thank you for, for the role that you've played as a, as a mentor, as a father in my life. Um, I wish you many, many more. And uh, yeah, ukulunga kokobi. Thank you very much, Ndaba Mandela is grandson to Dr. Nelson Mandela, telling us about some of the festivities and how the old man is spending um, the the birthday of his with with, with family uh, at home. But it's not just about family. Uh, there's been also various other activities. Joining me now are school children. As we said before, Nelson Mandela has really held their youth and youth development and school children very dear to heart. And these kids have been around here, these school children. They've been discussing certain issues and now we're going to join us can you just briefly tell us what is it that you guys have been deliberating upon inside me well as you said nelson mandela has had a passion for education and children and we are coming up with ideas to better education in communities to help everyone around us okay and then some of these ideas i understand you've been doing this for a while what have you come up what can you tell me what is it that you've come up with that you can say tomorrow can be a better day for yourself or other children Well, I think one of the most important ideas is communication skills amongst teachers and with students as well. And by having better communication skills, we have a better learning environment. All right, Mama, now can you also tell me what's your take on this? It's Dr. Nelson Mandela's 94th birthday. You're still at school. You come from a rural area. What sort of lessons have you drawn from the life and times of this old man? 
Oh, thank you. Uh, what I've drawn is that uh, m- most people who are coming in rural, uh, in rural areas are not taken seriously in terms of education or they are being neglected in terms of education. So that uh, have, uh, have made a role, have played a role in developing our country in terms of education. So we, we as, the spring, as, the spring break, as the spring breakers, we have come uh, to, to help learners to, fi- to find themselves in terms of education, to be responsible, to be disciplined. All right, thank you. And you, my friend, can you just briefly tell me, when you leave here after these discussions, what are you going to take to your other schoolmates that haven't had the opportunity to come and experience this? Basically, what we have learned here today, I'm going to go back and tell it to my school, to my high schoolmates, to everyone who wasn't here, who, to, to get to, who got to experience what we experienced. And um, basically, we had a nice time inside and we learned a lot, as you heard from the sister over here. All right, and what do you have to say about what you guys are doing there? I see you're a prefect of school. You also come from a rural area, like with Mandela came from a rural area. What sort of aspirations do you have, especially seeing as what he has managed to achieve coming from the same background? Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I must say that I've, we've really enjoyed ourselves here and this Mandela Day. And what I can say is that Nelson Mandela has showed, has showed the youth that wherever your background doesn't matter, what matters is where you're going. So your background is not really an obstacle to where you are going. You really need to work hard in life and, and to get what you, wanna, what you want in life, you really need to work hard. And, and that's what I've learned from him. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. From the horse's mouth, so to speak, these are the children that have also come here today. Day, also sharing experiences, also trying to preserve a legacy that Utatu Mandela is 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 said to is, has tried to maintain his his entire life. Now earlier, talking about archives, we're broadcasting from the Nelson Mandela Museum. Now this place is tasked with preserving legacy of Utatu Mandela, keeping his name alive. Uh, we earlier spoke to Human Settlements Minister uh, Mr. Tokyo Sohualu, who also spent some time on Robin Island. Uh, let us watch. Minister, you spoke a lot about the importance of preservation of archives. Can you just briefly elaborate how important is it to keep archives? It's important that we are standing in the right place at the right time today on Madiba's birthday, where this museum is dedicated to keeping the archives of his memory so that we can continue to follow the example of his method and struggle. I am a member of the Nelson Mandela Center of Memory at the Mandela Foundation. And our task is to protect his legacy by keeping his archives alive. But archives by themselves, books, artifacts, documents, reports, without life in them, cannot take us far. The objective is to make sure that people are able to utilize them, to change their own lives, to interact with them in order to provide a future both of themselves and the society around. All right, and then, Minister, where is the link between keeping these archives at a place like this and ordinary people? How does an ordinary person also benefit from keeping such? I wish we could take the example of Mali, because in Mali, every family tries to write their own story, their own books. Um, The richness of the people is not determined by cows or by gold or salt, those type of things, but by archives. Here... It is important that this knowledge gets to our people, that archives must not just be seen as something fair, as we say, but people must be able to understand this knowledge, keep it themselves, interact with it and hold discussions, and also, far away from here, this space, create similar spaces within their own communities, in their own families, and so on. Our life on Robben Island was also archival, in so far as we use that space and time to think about how best South Africa is going to look in the future. It was a moment of discussion for the 27 years for Madiba. Okay, 15 years for me because I got a discount. All right, tell me now, looking at this importance of preserving these archives and looking at situations like Timbuktu, are our archives under threat? Uh, Not here. But they're under threat if they are not utilized by people. If they lie wasted uh, in the sun. Archives need to be given a life about democracy, about science, about economics. It's about education, it's about people. But most importantly, as Professor Kolelaman said today, some archival material are not really about hard artifacts and documents. It's just the thinking. The biggest archival material we've ever received from Nelson Mandela, is that of giving us something, the memory 
of understanding that it's about freedom, your own freedom and the freedom of another person. It's about the economy, the economy of other people before yours. So, so archival material must not just be seen as artifacts. It's also the ideas for change. All right, and then finally, Minister, you talk of Robin Allen. You spent time there, Adiba spent time there. Any sort of recollection or memory on how his birthday, like it is today, used to be spent? Birthday on Robin Islands were spent um, in a very lackluster manner. But importantly is that we dedicate birthdays to Ahmed Katsada a close companion of Nelson Mandela. Kathy used to make sure that even if he writes you a letter, because we didn't have paper, sometimes on a piece of toilet paper, he would remind people to tell you that it's your birthday today. A secret letter arrives, your birthday, and he would link you to a particular occasion. For instance, I came to learn that on the same day I was born, Stalin died. But also on the same day I was born, uh, Gorbachev was born as well, but years before. They would link up these things and of course uh, the small things would happen like Kamela sometimes would give you a bit of acha uh, for your birthday and uh, Madiba would remember to give you maybe a Mari biscuit one Mari biscuit because he was allowed one packet a year uh, for us during those times those are great moments just imagine this emblematic iconic um, statesman of the world sitting in prison and celebrating the birthdays of other people by giving you either a handshake, a letter on the toilet paper, or a small mari biscuit. Thank you very much, Minister. Tokyo Sekwale is human, uh, human Settlements Minister, and he also a former Robin Islander, telling us more about uh, the times he spent with uh, Tatu Nelson Mandela in prison and indeed the importance of preservation of archives. That is Human Settlements Minister and former Robin Islander Tokyo Sekwale telling us about the importance of preserving um, archive and legacy and indeed how uh, uh, for 27 years uh, birthdays were spent in, in Robin Island for President Nelson Mandela. But joining me now is Pumla Matiba, who is the chairperson of the Nelson Mandela Museum Council, where we are broadcasting from. Um, can you just briefly tell me, the museum, what role is it playing in terms of we've been talking of preserving legacy, we've been talking of keeping that Mandela's name alive. What role are you guys playing in ensuring that that is indeed um, achieved? Ngozi Budi, uh, yes, this is indeed yet another centre that seeks to preserve Nelson Mandela's memory. But it does so in a little different way because, first of all, in Umtata, at what used, is, used to be called Ibunga, we are keeping the, his um, gifts and medals that have been given to him ever since he walked out of, uh, of, uh, of prison. And here we are preserving his legacy and his memory in uh, more the invisible way, the intangible way, because we have programs, live programs, where we engage and involve schools and youth in particular, and they come here for periods of about a week and longer, being taken through Mandela's uh, 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 memory so that they internalize the values that he put across to us, which we believe those are the things that will make us who we should be. And then by focusing uh, on youth, we are saying, these children must get to know about these things while they are young, and then they will be the Mandelas of the future. There are many other things, artworks and things, because that's an expression of somebody's ideas. And so they must also get into that. As you may know, art is taught in very few, if any, schools in South Africa. So there are many different ways. We have tours. While people might think we are part of the tourism industry, by doing so we are saying walk through this memory and do exactly what this man did and what we should be doing. And we take them to the various places that are very important on which he actually set his feet so we are walking through the footsteps. As you know, the Nelson Mandela Museum has four points. The Ibunga Building, 
Unu, where we are standing today, Mvezo, his birthplace, and Mkhegezo, which is where he went through a very important moment or period of a rite of passage from boyhood to manhood. You may even count the, uh, the, the prison because he set his foot there and many other places where he was caught in, uh, in, uh, in, in Natal. So all those places are actually chapters in this big book that will never be finished. But what is important is that even those who have never been to school read it through actually being part of it. They participate. And in that way, if we do it in a repetitive way every year, in fact, every day of the life of this museum, we can catch as many people as there are in South Africa and in the world. All right, then, Mama Tiba, just finally, the whole world is celebrating Mandela Day. Any special programs that you as the museum are embarking on to ensure that this day is felt even in this part of the world? Certainly, yes. Today, we decided this year that we need to have a colloquium because we've been doing almost the same thing since our establishment 11 years ago. And this time we said, let's call Isfundiswa, the learned people, to give us ideas because that's what is their job. And they write it down for us to carry as this raw material, as this mpako provision, so that we can uh, formulate a better and more rich strategic plan so that we implement the things that they say. For an example, they said we need as South Africans to focus more on the invisible side of cultural heritage. By cultural heritage, we mean now this time the values that Madiba stood for so that we finish and put this cake and make it a whole, the visible and the invisible, the tangible and the intangible, because we are running the danger in this country that we will lose our identity. Thank you very much, Mama. Upumlan Matiba is the chairperson of the Nelson Mandela Music Museum Council, tasked with preserving the legacy and keeping um, the name of Nelson Mandela alive. Now, we have been broadcasting from Unu at the Nelson Mandela Museum, where there's still a lot of people coming in as I speak to you that will come to celebrate the birthday with the Dr. Nelson Mandela. But that is all we have from now here at Unu. We'll go back to you guys and join us back. Well, thanks there to Lim Kulumko Jim Longo. Well, one of Madiba's friends, George Bezos, is the man who defended him, Govan Beggy, and Walter Sisulu in the Rivonia treason trial. Bezos also defended the father of the Namibian independence struggle, Herman Toivo the Toivo. Convicted in South Africa for terrorism, Toivo served 16 years, most of the time on Robben Island with Nelson Mandela. Both men inspired Bezos, who says he will always remember Toivo and Madiba's statements during their respective trials. Together with Nelson Mandela, two great speeches have been made in a courtroom. I remember the opening words of Toivo, your Toivo, that shook the judge that uh, was going to sentence people to death. My Lord, we find ourselves in a foreign country convicted by a judge who is a stranger to us. <laughs> Can you still remember those words? I do. This was my lawyer. Had it not been for him, perhaps I wouldn't be here today. He saved my life and I enjoyed the independence of Namibia for which I stood and I'm still alive because of this man. Uh, Toivo is too generous. It was his courage, the courage of Nelson Mandela and many other political prisoners in the country who stood and said, this is what we believe in. If needs be, this is what we are prepared to die for. And one day you will have to come to the negotiating table to recognize our humanity, to recognize our liberty, to recognize us as human beings. Something's just
just can't be copied. Like that fresh from the salon feeling I get from my Weller stylist. But now Weller gets you really close. Weller Pro Series in retail. Expert hair care at an affordable price. Get really close to salon feeling. New Weller Pro Series from Weller. Make a mother's touch a touch more soothing. Fix Vapor Up. Its soothing vapors give up to eight hours of breathing relief. <laughs> Maybe it works a little. disability, you are accepted as ordinary human beings like myself, and uh, you have uh, hopes and wishes like all of us, and uh, so be encouraged and uh, know that uh, you can overcome uh, whatever disabilities that you have. Thank you very much. Our love for children is undiminished. Their innocence and energy, their happiness and welfare must be protected and treasured. It is their laughter that I yearn for most while in prison. My children's fund will continue to bring hope to children and young people. A new generation of potential leaders is beginning to emerge on the African continent. The Mandela Road Foundation will nurture these young people, helping to stimulate their creativity, even as they acquire the skills that will help her reshape the destiny of our continent. Well, sharing with you there some moments from years gone by. Nelson Mandela uh, meeting with all sorts of people from uh, uh, America, from the United Kingdom, and of course most of uh, those pictures were of him and children, the people he feels particularly close to. They are from moments gone by, but certainly not from uh, today. Today he is spending his time at home in Kunu, where uh, you saw we crossed to earlier on with Lumko Jim Longo. 
We are now going to cross to the Western Cape in a place called Beaufort West, cold Beaufort West, where Lukanyo Kalata is standing by to give us a sense of what is going on here, where volunteers are busy building some structures for the less fortunate. Lukanyo, it's over to you. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Well, Beaufort West isn't that cold as it was this morning. Look, the sun is out and uh, the spirits have lifted a little bit. Now, the whole morning we've been hearing and we've been talking about uh, the youth being involved in the construction of a youth hub. Well, we finally have uh, in front of me a, a, a scale model of what this hub will look like in, in roughly 18 months from now. And the person uh, to run us through this hub and what it will actually entail is uh, the chief designer, uh, the chief urban designer from the Department of Rural uh, uh, Development as well as Land Reform. We've got Mr. Calvin Naidu to explain to us. Uh, Mr. Naidu, thank you very much. First of all, good afternoon. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about this youth? What will they actually be constructing? Well, um, they'll be constructing what they ask for. We've had numerous consultations with them to find out what it is that they prefer, their requirements and their needs, and we've tried to accommodate facilities that talk to these things and if I can show you here on the model, um, this is a skills development centre that we've currently locating at the back of the site uh, this is the existing hall this is a new car parking space that we're going to be putting in, this is a new ICT centre, we saw a lot of need for high speed internet access people want to learn how to use iPads they see them on TV, we're going to be providing that beanbag environment lounge environment, wood, that sort of stuff we're also trying to accommodate some public space for the community at large. We thought that the hall is underused, so we're putting in a, an Angora, an old Roman type of public space, uh, a Gabian garden, so we can have sort of public outdoor services, church services, weddings, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then we have a large sort of recreation component consisting of firstly a combi court, which is a combination of many sports, um, a large change room and locker facility, as well as a gym upstairs with studios for karate and yoga, and then this, which is a uh, 25 by 25, which is a half Olympic size pool. Um, yeah, that's what we have on site. All right. And then, I mean, the department's in involvement, obviously, with the youth. W what does that entail? I mean, how, how will you guys, will you be guiding them? How will you be guiding them? Um, well, through the NARISEC program, all youth will be trained and skilled in different types of built uh, techniques. And then what we try to do is accommodate those techniques in the elements that we have designed into the scheme. So if you think about gabions, how we can use gabions, uh, we have a gabion garden. We also have a lot of um, sort of stone okay. work. Yeah. Cool, Mr. Naidu, thank you very much. Now, uh, M uh, Mr. Naidu is the chief urban designer for the department, and uh, he was talking a lot about the use of gabions. And a little bit earlier on, I got to talk to some of the youth who will be involved in this project, and they showed me a thing or two about how to build and construct a gabion. One of the skills that uh, these guys or these youth at least will have to learn over the course of the next 18 months as they construct this youth hub is the skill of Gabian packing. Now I've been, it, it may seem easy, but I have been told by uh, quite a number of people that it is not as easy as it looks. There's a particular skill to it. There's a way in which the rocks need to be formed. There's, you know, you need to decide on which rocks, what type of rock goes at the bottom uh, and which rock goes at the top. Now to tell me a little bit more about this particular skill of Gabian packing, I'm going to ask the team leader of the Gabian packers who will be responsible for them uh, over the next 18 months. His name is Colin. Colin, um, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. Tell us a little bit about what Gabian packing is about. Gabian packing is about uh, it prevents uh, falling rocks from a mountain not to fall into the road. So it prevents accidents and uh, the, 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 the purpose of this flat stone is you have to use the flat the straight side to put it against the fan so that the shape of the KBM is straight. Yeah, yeah. Where did you, where did you learn this skill? I learned this skill is about um, the year 2007 from a construction called ANR, ANR Enterprises Construction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Thanks very much, Colin. Um, I was going to speak to a lady, Priscilla, but I see, I see she has run away from me. Can we, can, can we just talk to this lady? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. 
Uh, Esme, can you tell me a little bit about what you have learned, or, or what, yeah, what you have learned about Gabion packing, and 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 and, and what you've learned from uh, this uh, the, 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 this training course? I did learn very much when we came here the first day. We didn't know even how much to pack a gabion, but now we did learn how to pack the gabion, the foundation and all that stuff. And it's nice to learn new stuff. And the gabion, it's nice for when the rocks falls and you can sit on it and relax. Okay, usually they use to prevent uh, rocks from going onto the road, but you guys are going to be use it, are going to use it to build an amphitheater, am I right? Yes. Okay. And then, what are you guys? What will? What do you know about that amphitheater? What will be? What will it be used for? I don't know actually, but maybe the other can tell you. But we just know about this Gabion that we did back. Okay, that's cool. Esme, thank you very much for your time. Uh, very importantly, Gabion packing not as easy as. Uh, All right, and with me now, I've got uh, the Minister of uh, Rural Development and uh, Land Reform uh, to talk to us exactly about what these youth will be doing with those gabions, uh, uh, you know, that they were constructing for us a little bit earlier on. Minister, thank you very much once again for joining us. Minister, we've now seen what uh, the, the, the Youth Hub will look Olympic size swimming pool, um, probably there will be a library somewhere, and there's all, there's all, of sorts, of, all sorts of things. So um, my sense is that youth development uh, today uh, should, should be both physical and mental. Um, that's why I think they've chosen the right thing. Now the gabions there are going to be the, the, the steps, or whatever you call them, um, uh, in the sitting arrangement. So you, instead of, of, of creating, using mud, and they're going to use gabions, and, but of course they're going to seal it off. Yes. Why, why is this project important, especially for a town like Beaufort West, a town that finds itself so much isolated from, 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 from major urban areas like Cape Town and those likes? Why? to the history of Beaufort West. Beaufort West was granted municipal status in 1837, a year before the Great Trek. It thus became the first municipality in South Africa. In the 1860s, the town name was changed to Beaufort West to avoid confusion with Fort Beaufort and Port Beaufort. Today, the town is a major stopover for motorists traveling on the N1 between Johannesburg and Cape Town. The unemployment rate in the town is very high. Many of those struggling to find jobs are among the youth. Residents say this leads to youngsters becoming involved in crime, prostitution and drug abuse. They say more needs to be done in terms of youth development. We've got a, a huge problem with our youth. Um, we've got like in, um, the, the problem with drugs as, as, as such and uh, the pregnancies um, with, 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 our young, with our youngsters. And that's a big problem for us and um, there is no facilities for our youth. So trying to uplift the community. There aren't many opportunities to develop local talent. 
the challenges are, um, you know, coming with initiatives to the guys upstairs and um, not really getting attention from them. So I had the plan of, of, of building a company that, um, that we as artists can go together and approach those people and say, listen, we are serious about achieving our goals and, and, and being out there and, and make our voices heard. But today, on Mandela Day, light has finally arrived for the unemployed youth of this area. Rural Development and Land Affairs, in partnership with the SABC's Touching Lives, Beaufort West Municipality and the Central Karoo District Municipality, will be launching a youth hub that will give skills to the unemployed. For putting that package together for us. We're back live now and we're talking to the Director General of the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, Mr. Mduduzi Shabane. Sir, thank you very much for your time and thank you for joining us. Sir, this obviously is a very key uh, project for your department. Uh, is it a pilot? Yes, it is a pilot. Uh, as much as we are already involved in three other provinces, this is the fourth uh, project of a, a similar nature. So we are looking at upscaling uh, elsewhere across the country. What exactly are you then hoping to achieve from projects like these in terms of four communities like Beaufort West? I think first of all, every rural community uh, in our country needs this kind of development, particularly focusing on the upscaling uh, of the skills of the young people, providing facilities, because as you would know, crime is one of the uh, key priorities of government, providing facilities like these, providing uh, uh, training uh, and and other facilities that are going to keep our youth very, very busy uh, is quite key. But we also say they, they provide an opportunity for small enterprises to emerge because we expect young people themselves to be involved in the actual development of, of these particular projects. How has the response been? I think, let's speak mostly, the response been from the parents of these youths that you guys have got involved in this project. I think everybody here is very excited. I don't think they ever believed that something of this nature could happen here. So, so our sense is that there's a high level of excitement. They would obviously want to see bricks and mortar on the ground. They want to see the structures rising. So, so we believe that it has been very much well received. Uh, that was uh, Mr. Mduduzi Shabane, who is uh, the Director General of the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, talking to us uh, about this youth hub that uh, we saw uh, construction uh, starting of uh, this morning. Now, it's expected to take roughly 18 months for everything to be up, the swimming pools, the ICT centers, uh, the, the gym, and, and everything that entails this youth hub. And we're hoping to come back, obviously, when it is being launched, and then we can bring that to you to say, look, we have followed this process right throughout the start. And, uh, well, that's it from us in Beaufort West. We cross back to you guys uh, in Johannesburg, and uh, we'll uh, hope to see you guys soon. Lukanyo Talata in Beaufort West. Well, different political parties and organizations have also wished former President Nelson Mandela well. <laughs> The towering figure of President Mandela himself represents the very best that South Africa can be. It gives us hope for the future, confidence in ourselves to live up to what we know we can be, and determination to do so. Thomas Mandela is not only an icon, but in fact, he has a moral authority, he has integrity. I still have to find a man who hates him because he's just lovable, an excellent man that we really, really appreciate. He has uh, established, among others, uh, himself as one of the living evidence that the color of the human being does not matter. It is the quality of the human being uh, that matters. He ep uh, epitomizes uh, the selflessness, discipline, perseverance, and reconciliation. And his life continues to inspire uh, all of us to look beyond ourselves and to work for the common good and to appreciate that in life there is something bigger than the self. And a message from the chairperson of the African Union Commission. Unuelo Lute, as we say, 
because he has been an inspiration to all of us and he will remain our guiding star uh, so we are very happy that he's celebrating his 94th birthday and we wish him many many more also in line to send their message the pan-african youth union youth of the continent and diaspora we want to say uh, that he must live longer, he must enjoy his day. Uh, he's a great man. All of us as young people in the African continent is our role model. He fought for the reconciliation of this country. He fought for nation building. And uh, he stick to his, uh, to his promise of, uh, of, of standing for one term. Nelson Mandela was a man of his weight who committed and stick to that one term promise. And we can feel the warmth of God's delight. The ways that we should live are written in your face. Only Madiba, of course, can unite South Africa's political parties and get them to talk in one voice. Well, anti-apartheid uh, and civil rights activist from the United States, uh, Harry Belafonte, says he was reluctant to organize former President Nelson Mandela's first trip to the United States after his release from prison. We'll be bringing you those memories in a short while. But before we do that, we're now going to go quickly to Zerast, where the official uh, uh, commemoration uh, function is being held by the government uh, for, to celebrate Nelson Mandela's birthday. Let's quickly cross over to there before we bring you that insert. So, <laughs> We are now going to speak. Uh, we're going to talk now to uh, uh, the acting uh, premier here in the northwest, who is also now uh, uh, acting in on behalf of the premier who is not here. Happy birthday, Tata Mandela. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tata Madiba. Happy birthday. Long live, Tata Madiba. Long live. Ah, Dalpunga. Ah, Dalpunga. Um, <coughs> Let me start by thanking the poet, uh, that warm welcome. Uh, uh, Rem Radisi, Program Directors, the Acting Premier of the Northwest Province, MEC Mabe, Kidumil Sedi Kosi, Kaufela Sedi Linteng, Kajenu Mo Musebetzing Ona, Kirumedi Sedi Minister Rakaufela, Minister Mutsuale, Dilebabang, Balinteng, Baksababonang, Deputy Ministers Balinte Kaufela, the members of the provincial legislature, and the speaker, the members of the executive council, the MECs, the Mayor Kaufela Tsedilinte Kajenu, leaders of political parties. Chief Whip of the Majority Party, Ntate Matole Mutsekha, 
ladies and gentlemen, Chabakaufela, San Northwest, Selintemo, Kajenu, Kahulukulu, Molapeng, Labafurus. Program Director, firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Nkosa Zanazamini Zuma, on being elected as the new chair of the African Union Commission. <laughs> we wish her well in her new role, and we have no doubt that she will serve our continent with distinction. Malibongwe ikamalama kosigas. Let me also take this opportunity to thank all of you for joining us today to celebrate the birthday of the father of our nation, Otata Nelson Kholithasa Mandela. Let's all say happy birthday, Tata, happy birthday. Program director, today we mark Tata Madiba's 94th birthday. The 18th of July was declared in 2009 by the United Nations General Assembly as an international Nelson Mandela Day. The celebration of Mandela Day recognizes and honors our former president's commitment to the objective of building a national democratic society that is united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous. It also honors his contribution to the reconstruction and development of our country into the equally important task of building a better Africa and a better world. On this day, and indeed during the entire month of July, citizens of the world, and in particular all South Africans, are encouraged to dedicate at least 67 minutes of their time to do community work in celebration of the values, principles that our first democratic president stood for. The 67 minutes symbolizes Madiba's 67 years of selfless service to the people of South Africa and the world in the course of his extraordinary life. Nelson Mandela Day is an opportunity for all South Africans to set aside to be of service to fellow human beings. In honoring Madiba since yesterday, we have been here in Lehorutsi to celebrate with you the life of this icon by visiting and painting schools, donating books. We have also hoisted the South African flags in a number of schools and also doing various community service activities. Sekisibon Sangmo Bahechu Kore Hansi Rekitika Mukitiwo Wamatsualo Anta Tenelsen Mandela Kutuela Mabane Rinseritza Matulongena Lidi Ministara Lidi MEC Silebo Meara Rinse Rituusa Mo Community Nyaro Nariete Tsidikolo Hape Rilera Lukisa Lidikolo Rapenta Dikolo Rafaba Nadi Buka Rilera Fale eh, family trading ma tu eh, relata kuri tuse batu ba shupeha. Together with the municipality, we have also handed over two houses to the needy and facilitated the renovation of two other houses in the area. We have done all of this because of the inspiration and lessons we draw from the life of Tata Madiba. Kamantswa mangtotsenar dieza relate la mushala wanda te mandela oilenga sebelesa sechaba 
antse a sebelesa sechaba bophelo ba gae ka ofela re latela mo mohlaleng wa gae le baetapele le rona o re sebeletse sechaba re thuse ga golo batho ba tlopega program director we have done we have done this because as this government the government that Tata Madiba once led as its first democratically elected president is about making a change in the lives of our people. I would like, therefore, to thank each and every one of you for taking time to make a change in the life of our people. Tata Madiba, today we want to once more make a commitment to continue to emulate the values of Ubuntu, values of humility, respect, caring for others, which we have learned through your exemplary life. From you, we once more learned that Mutu Kimutu Gabatu, Umuntu Mumuntu Ngabantu. Inspired by the life of Tatmadiba, as the people of South Africa, we must continue to work together to change the lives of our people for the better. We must work together to provide quality education and quality health care. We must work together to build safer communities, to create more job opportunities for all, to ensure rural development, and to build sustainable livelihoods for our communities. Program director, on the 4th and 5th of land that Mutu Kimutu Gabatu, Umuntu presenting all racial groups converge in Clap Town for the National Summit on Social Cohesion. Inspired by the Umuntu Gabatu, those who attended the National Summit on Social Cohesion recommitted themselves to the vision of a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. Together, they pledged to do everything necessary to build a caring, humble, and dignified nation. Delegates to the Social Cohesion Summit agreed on a Inspired by the life of Tatmadiba, as the people of South Africa, we must continue to work together to change the lives of our people for the better. We must work together to development and to build sustainable livelihoods for our communities. Program director, on the 4th and 5th of this month, more than a thousand delegates from across the length and breadth of our country, representing all racial groups, converge in Clap Town for the National Summit on Social Cohesion. Inspired by the generation of 1955 that came together in Clap Town and adopted the Freedom Charter, those who attended the National Summit on Social Cohesion recommitted themselves to the vision of a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. Together, they pledged to do everything necessary to build a caring, humble, and dignified nation. Delegates to the Social Cohesion Summit agreed on a program of action that will be implemented jointly by stakeholders, civil society, labor, business, and other stakeholders. Rerbahae Shu, Kadi Foli, the 5th of July, but by Leba Kopa, Nabalibangata, Kwa Mutsingwat Leptown, Haute, more freedom charter, Ilenya Adoptuating, South Africa, Yabote. South Africa, Eretse Bangkore, Kao Fela Ronar Lalma Lukelo, Atswana. Rilera Kopana Mo Samitieu, Horetsu Etse Pele, Tse Dileng Diabonswa, Ho Dokumentia Rona, Ya Freedom Charter. 
delegates to the Social Cohesion Summit agreed on a program of action that will be implemented jointly by government, by civil society, labor, business, and all stakeholders. Program Director, this program of action is aimed at assisting us as South Africans to make new and decisive advances towards the noble goal on one of one nation, one country, one people, and a shared destiny that belongs to all who live in it, black and white, united in our diversity. Delegates at that historic summit also resolved to work together to build a society where there is respect, equality, and human dignity for all. They resolved to promote freedom, the rule of law, and democracy, improve the material well-being of all citizens, and ensure economic justice. They further committed themselves to enhance sound family and community values, uphold honesty, integrity, and loyalty, ensure harmony in culture, belief, and conscience, show respect and concern for all people, strive for justice, fairness, and peaceful coexistence, and to protect the environment. These values are not only articulated in the Charter of Positive Values, which as the Department of Arts and Culture we will continue to promote, but they are also articulated by Tata Madiba's life. Equally, these values are about the kind of society we seek to build, a society reflective of our shared and non-racial destiny. This is a society that acknowledges that our future is linked and that our prosperity depends on all of us working together. Program Director, as we celebrate the life of Tata Madiba, we must continue to work hard to address the socio-economic needs of our people. Relata Horebahechu, Resebetse Katata, Resebetse Moho, Rituse Batubatu Pecha, Reshebane Limatata Batubas Nang Misebetsi, Reshebane Limatata Tuto Limatata Zabupilo, Resebetse Moho, Rekonoreletse Bupilo Bobunte Batukao Fela. Program Director, while massive progress has been made over the past 18 years of freedom and democracy to build a better life for all, we know that the majority of our people continue to grapple on a daily basis with the challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. We must therefore continue to work hard to find comprehensive responses to these challenges. This we must do because it is not possible to talk about total emancipation of our people without ensuring that there is visible difference in the lives of all South Africans. In particular, we must work together to expand access to employment and other economic opportunities, especially to the young people, women and people with disabilities. The young people. We must make sure that young people can acquire skills and be able to be employable. Program Director, on this day, we recall the words of Tatu Madiba, who in 2009 said the following, and I quote, We can change the world and make it a better place. It is in your hands to make a difference. Close quote. It is this, in this context that we call on all South Africans 
to take action now and make every day a Mandela Day. Rebatu Bahaisho, Lezatila Nelson Mandela, Moritusang Batubabang, Iskaban Turi Ezang Fela, Kalija Chilela di 18, Fela Kamata Kau Fela, Hunter Seveza, the community in Zarona, even Turi Ezang Kamata Ose. We must make every day a Nelson Mandela Day. Program Director, as I conclude, let us all individually and collectively strive to become agents for building a better and caring society. This is a kind of society that Utatu Madela, Utatu Madiba will be proud of. And I want to end once again by wishing Utatu Nelson Mandela a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tatu Madiba. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tatu Nelson Mandela. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Program Director Kia Lebuha, Kaufela Sichaba Samo Lehuruzi, Sichaba San Northwest, Ria Lebuha, Hulu Valiluna, Kajeno Rere. Happy Nelson Mandela Day. Kia Lebu. Well, that was uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture, the Honourable Minister uh, Paul Mashatile, delivering the keynote address here at Tinokana Stadium, the main event to celebrate uh, Utada Nelson Mandela's life as he celebrates his birthday today, the 94th birthday, as well as uh, the 67 Minutes Initiative, where people are being encouraged all over the country and all over the world to do something for people who are less fortunate without expecting anything in return. Let's cross over to Chriselda now on the other side of the stadium. Chriselda. Well, thank you very much, Tami. Plus minus about 5,000 people on this side of the stadium and other people still trying to get into the stadium. Let's speak to some of the people as well who have come to join in on the celebrations here, uh, celebrating Dr. Nelson Mandela's birthday. Uh, Kakiso, thank you very much for joining us. Kakiso, you're a young man. You are the future of this country. What is it that you plan to do to build on the legacy of uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela? I firstly think that uh, for this is our legacy. We must oh you we as a youth let me let hands on, especially for the sake of our politicians, so that we can step on their footsteps for the sake of our future. There are people who can grab these opportunities, especially from the as youth of South Africa. So this is our opportunity for us to use this chance. Kakiso, what are you doing for your 67 minutes? For my 67 minutes, I'm going to another home there in my village. I'm going to help to paint the building there. Are you going to make every day a Nelson Mandela day? Exactly, man. Exactly. Right. Thank you very much, Kakiso. That's what's happening on this side of the stadium. Let's cross back to you guys. To honour Nelson Mandela is indeed to try and realise, in whatever small way, what he believed in, and indeed to follow his extraordinary example of self-sacrifice. Not that they're called upon, thank whatever gods may be, to indeed go and spend 27 years 
on on the island on Robben Island, but the way that he kept his somehow kept his sanity, the true meaning of sanity, which includes um, consideration of other people, and the fact that you you cannot exist on your own, you do not exist on your own, you are part of this great net. For myself, I can say that I've been lucky enough to know him personally. Um, he has shown an interest in um, unimportant me. When he was in prison, one of the books that was smuggled into him was one of my novels, uh, and he he wrote to me about it, and the letter was smuggled out. So we've ca- kept a uh, some kind of connection. I've never impressed myself upon him because I think that he belongs to to all of us, and one mustn't take advantage that one knows him personally. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world. The sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement. Let freedom reign. God bless Africa. I thank you. On the international day where humanity celebrates the life of Nelson Kholihlahla Mandela, we continue to bring you those moments, taking us back to the years when we are still very active and very healthy and mixing with all sorts of people from all over the world, all in an effort to spread the message, but also uh, to, to, to give us inspiration to do the things that he stood for all of his life. Well, we're back now to that insert that we wanted to play for you earlier on when anti-apartheid civil rights uh, activist Harry Belafonte spoke to us about how he was reluctant to organize uh, Madiba's first trip to the United States after his release in 1990 from prison. This was because the world-famous singer just wasn't sure if he was up to the task of handling an assignment so big. But in the end... Belafonte did it anyway. He made this revelation in an interview with the SABC's Sherwin Bryce Pease in New York. He's the singer who made the Banana Boat song famous. A veteran anti-apartheid civil rights activist, Harry Belafonte remembers his first day with Madiba with a smile on his face. When... The ANC decided, and Nelson Mandela decided, that he would pay a visit to the United States. I was called by the ANC through Lindewe Mabuza, who was minister with our portfolio at the time, and then summoned to London by Oliver Tambo to talk about the details of Madiba's visit to America and uh, asked that I uh, take a leading role in helping to design that. And I thought that uh, uh, they had made the wrong choice. I said, I don't know how to handle anything that vast, a canvas that big. I don't want to deal with all the Americans and people that don't want to touch uh, the Messiah's garment. I said, you know, that's a tough seat. And after Oliver listened to him, Mr. Tambo listened to all of this, he said, fine. You're the perfect person for the job. A job he would take on with aplomb. After all, this was Madiba's maiden trip to the United States since his release from Victor Fester prison in February of 1990. I took on the responsibility of trying to organize, along with some others who worked with me, on what should be the highlights of Madiba's visit and those in the ANC's 
as well Aki Susulu and others who attended him, including Winnie. It was a moment of tremendous triumph. It touched many of us so deeply when he walked off the plane and he spotted me on the, on the tarmac waiting down below on the red carpet. He saw me and as he walked down the stairs he came over the first thing he said to me was, Ah, Harry boy! And uh, here I was, a grown man, and he was this older man, this, this, this icon, he's calling me Harry boy. And I found it so affectionate, so it kind of threw me. But uh, it was a great time for South Africa. It was a great time for this country to have had Madiba come to visit and to have stayed with him for 11 days, no matter where he went in flight. And I was, I was really his advance man and uh, I helped introduce him to many who I thought uh, it would be important for him to meet. We challenged him on his comparison of Madiba to the Messiah, a reference Madiba himself would no doubt reject. I am very cautious about divinity. I'm very cautious about uh, uh, creating idols and idol worship. But occasionally in the history of mankind, there are forces that emerge from our midst that are beyond the norm. You have in individuals that emerge at times that are larger than life. And uh, the only way to describe them sometimes is to view the aura of who they are and see it somehow as divine power. He explained that his reference was less religious and more philosophical in nature. I never say give title that way based upon the rituals of religion. I say it based upon the dynamic of the personality of the individual. And I don't know that I've ever referred to Madiba in religious terms until just now, as a matter of fact. I just see what happens to people, certainly here in America. Uh, there was a, a, a sense, and what was particularly important about that visit was America pretends at morality. It speaks in great moral mm -hmm. terms, in great moral definitions. It speaks about democracy and people and freedom. Yet in its practice, it is quite different or things happen that are quite different. And uh, when you see presidents and people, they come, they go, they mm -hmm. grow. They... But when you see a person like Mandela, he is the embodiment of, first of all, a moral center that's, that's unchallengeable. Mm -hmm. And he brings that presence everywhere he goes, and people feel humbled by it. And they feel uh, 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 the presence of something that is worthy of their attention. And given the chance, we asked him what he would say to Madiba today. Madiba, you left us a great legacy, but never in the history of humankind would you ever have been as missed as much as we miss you right now and your wisdom and your place in the affairs of the order of this planet. The world is in desperate need of morality. It is in need of a moral vision. It's in the need of a vision that would lead people in a moral and a courageous way. And the only real evidence of that in recent history were two men that I knew of. One was Dr. King, and the other was Nelson Mandela. And I would say to Adiba, uh, come back. Uh, throw off the shackles of age. Uh, forgive surrendering to the to the, to, the, to the pains and the aches here and there. We need you. An icon in his own right, remembering one of the greatest of them all. Sherman Bryce Pease, SABC News, New York. Bekeng e go lefela sechana ana di province tsa naga di ka khona go amogela ba ithuti ba di pholelo tshe beng di sa bolwele nakong ya khatlolo e ka kwa di bona go lotsa batho ba ba seng ha di tshwane school sa masa batho ba ba tsho ba tsa di bang ka bana ba ba isa mo le school nka nka e si school o si tshi si school o ibinge si so e school o
Lebella Lito Lasi Chava Kalabone 6 o'clock Matapama for number SABC2. Van Pasella af, baie gelukkige verjaarsdag aan oud-president Nelson Mandela. Ons hoop dit inspireer allemaal om hulle 67 minuten verliefdadigheid te gee. Van een warm boodschap na treie aantrek vir die Noordpool en die Sanipas. Ons krij raad vir natuurlijk verkouwersbeveg, preserveer wintervruchte, genie die gematigde klimaat van ons willekus en steek vier aan by Dwayne Vermeulen. Pasella, woensdag 37, SABC 2. This week on American Idol, we have combed the country in pursuit of the best talent in America. And tonight, we present to you the top 12 guys. And here they are. Only five will make it through, so you got to vote. It's time for the ladies to take the stage. Here we go, girls. This is American Idol. American Idol, Thursday and Saturday on 2. From July the 26th, the ass of the world will be in the London Olympics and South Africans will be cheering on our athletes with a kind of pride that helps build our nation. I want you guys to represent hard. I want you guys to do your best. Anything can happen. Koto Mugwen is going to do very well. I think he'll take gold this year. Smithel, who has it done yet? Bonar Bafat like you, na batama. It's well. Kasta Semina, otla reza ho. Kebe mototo ha hul. As long as you sweated and you ran your heart out. Tokase would like to wish the South African Olympics team all the luck on the upcoming London Olympics in July 2012. Bring it home, South Africa. Mr. Mandela, happy birthday. My name is Idris Elba, and I get the privilege of playing you in this movie. Your life is amazing, has been, continues to be. And it's a complete honor for me to uh, represent you, and I hope that I do a great job. My parents are from West Africa, Sierra Leone and Ghana, and my dad was very, very close to your story. Always talking about Mr. Mandela in our house. And so, when I told him that I was playing you in this movie, he nearly burst into tears. So we want to thank you from my family to yours, and I want to wish you a happy birthday. May you have many more. Mwah. Yeah. If you've just joined us, you're watching a live broadcast. We're coming to you from the SABC's Auckland Park Studios here in Johannesburg. This, of course, being a special broadcast in honor of Nelson Mandela, whose birthday it is today. It is, as you all know, the international day to celebrate the life of Nelson Mandela, but also to get people to commit to giving, at the very least, 67 minutes of their lives in honor of this man, but doing something for those who are less fortunate. Well, right now, we're doing exactly, we're going to cross to Soweto in Orlando, where Gillian Pillay is standing by talking to people who are doing exactly that, doing their little bit to help the less fortunate. Over to you, Gillian. What you are seeing now are visuals from inside the Mandela Museum. Slowly, um, visitors are trickling through this area, making their journey through the museum. Now, more than a century ago, Madiba moved into this home. Just about every tour that makes its way through Soweto stops here at the museum. Now, just to tell you a bit of history, Vilakazi Street is the only street in the world that has housed two Nobel Prize winners. I'm now joined by one of the Orlando West residents who has lived here for more than three decades. Good, good afternoon, Mr. Shadrach Mutau. When you think of this home, what are some of the memories that, you, that, that comes to your mind? The memories of this house actually was a parliament during the years of the participation when we were not allowed to participate in the government because all the people, they used to converge in this house to actually listen and strategize together with these great men who are uh, 94 years of age today. And therefore, even in the 70s, uh, we need kept that torch burning. But this has been a home for the nation. 
Just talk to us about when Mandela, re- when Mandela returned to this home um, after uh, being released from Victor Fester. What was the mood like? What do you remember about that particular I day? Mean, the mood, I mean, with me, my, uh, the way I experienced, I felt, actually, uh, felt like what I used to read about in the Bible about Moses when, you know, he was actually rescued from the Israel, by the Israelites. When, you know, the vibration, it actually vibrated in my blood that we have a great man here. And the times that Madiba did return to the museum, um, what was the, the mood like? And talk to us about his interaction. Uh, he actually, what I'd like to emphasize first, after he's released, he only walked into this house the third day, which was uh, the 13th. Because as we know, the first night, he actually spent it at Emeritus uh, at Bishop Desmond Titus' house in Cape Town, Bishop Scott. And the second night, he spent with the Richard Maponias out in Johannesburg. Then he walked here on the third day of, after his release, and you could actually not move. My house is the fifth one from Mandela as well as the Tutus. I mean, I could not even lock my gates. We had people from all over South Africa, Natal, Cape. They all converged here. They slept, and including uh, Brenda Fazi, my brother, who actually stay, okay, contributed so much. You could not, I mean, explain the feeling of us. We are all so excited. As you know, he actually was incarcerated for over 27 years. Just talk to us about the museum today. What does it mean to young people who journey through this area? I mean, this museum is one of the best because, I mean, we are fortunate in the sense that some of the pictures we even got them from the police archives. What you actually see is real. And therefore now, people like today, this great day, is actually been celebrated all over the world. And therefore, they actually, we have so many visitors. I mean, if ever you've never been to Mandela Museum, especially in Soweto, Villagas Street, 8115 in Villagas Street, then please make an effort and come and visit this house because you're missing a lot. There's so much that, I mean, because the house is actually is an institution on its own. A lot of fond memories there from Orlando West resident Shadrach Mutau, who's lived here for more than three decades. What we will leave you with are some responses and some well wishes from pupils who we've spoken to earlier this morning. I just want to wish him a very, very happy birthday and that he can uh, enjoy his day. What did you enjoy about the tour? Uh, I enjoyed a lot in the Mandela House. I experienced lots of difficulties in the apartheid. So I, I would like to thank the school for giving us this opportunity to enjoy ourselves and observe the, what, the struggle in apartheid. Thank you. Just, um, it's Madiba's birthday today. What would you like to say to him as, 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 as a youngster? I would like to say happy birthday, Mandela. Be happy where you are. Where you are, thank you. Um, I've experienced a lot because um, it shows that, that people who live in all ages, they experience many things that were done by Africaners and like they, that wasn't nice. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Madiba. Happy birthday to you. Deep, deep. Bekeng e go lefela sechana ana di province tsa naga di ka khona go amogela ba ithuti ba dipolelo tse beng di sa bolele nakeng ya khatlolo e ka kwa di bona go lotsa batho ba basweng ha di tshwanela sekolo sena sa batho ba basho ba tsa di banka bana ba ba isa mo sekolo ka nkana e se sekolo city se sekolo e binge se so e sekolo Level la lito la se chaba ka labone 6 o'clock mathapama go na mo SABC2 Van Pasella af baie gelukkige verjaarsdag aan oud-president Nelson Mandela ons hoop dit inspireer amal om hulle 67 minute verliefdadigheid te gee van 'n warm boodskap na treie aantrek vir die Noordpool en die Sanipas 
Ons krij raad vir natuurlik verkouwens beveg, preserveer wintervruchte, genie die gematigde klimaat van ons willekes en steek braaifleis vier aan by Dwein Vermeulen. Pasela, woensdag 37, SABC 2. From July the 26th, the ass of the world will be in the London Olympics and South Africans will be cheering on our athletes with a kind of pride that helps build our nation. I want you guys to represent hard. I want you guys to be your best. Anything can happen. Koto Mugwen is going to do very well. I think he'll take gold this year. Smisele, uwa si do yenza. Bonar Bafat la IQ na vatama. It's well! Kasta Seminya, otla reza ho. Rebe moto to ha hul. As long as you sweated and you ran your heart out. Talk SA would like to wish the South African Olympics team all the luck on the upcoming London Olympics in July 2012. Bring it home, South Africa. This week on American Idol. We have combed the country in pursuit of the best talent in America. And tonight, we present to you the top 12 guys. And here they are. Only five will make it through, so you got to vote. It's time for the ladies to take the stage. Here we go, girls. This is American Idol. American Idol, Thursday and Saturday on 2. Welcome back. You're watching a live broadcast. We're, of course, celebrating a birthday that has taken center stage on the South African calendar, but also in the world. South Africa and the world are celebrating this global icon, Nelson Kholisasa Mandela's birthday. Born to the chief of the Tembo tribe in Mveso in the Eastern Cape uh, 94 years ago, he went on to ignite the imagination of the world. From humble beginnings to become South Africa's most famous prisoner, to the first black president of a democratic South Africa. This is one way of doing it. But what is the proper way of celebrating an icon? The Mandela name transcends boundaries and borders. A larger-than-life personality synonymous with the people's struggle. He's inspired people from all walks of life. Happy birthday, Madiva. We love you. Happy birthday. We wish you many happy returns. I really would like to say happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, Madiba. Happy birthday, Madiba. We all think you're a role model. His birthday is celebrated across the globe, but he remains a son of our soil. Happy birthday, Tata. Happy birthday. said, okay, for Mandela Day, what will Mandela want us to do? So then we decided, let's, Mandela will want us to clean the environment because he wants this land and the kids to live in a safe place. Nelson Mandela's birthday is a global event. Well loved and respected as a gallant fighter and an inspiring yet humble leader. Feliz cumpleaños a ti, feliz cumpleaños a ti, feliz cumpleaños Nelson Mandela, feliz cumpleaños a ti. Happy birthday, you're very inspirational and I'm really proud to be here. Happy birthday Mr. Nelson Mandela, we want to thank you for the impact, not that you just have in South Africa, but the impact that you have in uh, America too. We just want to say God bless you. And happy birthday, and we hope you have a wonderful time uh, celebrating with your family and your friends. The Mandela story has become synonymous with selfless sacrifice. You see all of the fighting he did, what he sacrificed. It's almost like a parent who's caring for a child that he hasn't met just yet. He stood up to all of the policemen and people that just didn't like him at all. 
and I believe that he was very perseverant, meaning that he did not give up on what he wanted to do. Whatever the language, culture, or geographical location, people are united in wishing the father of the Rainbow Nation a happy birthday. Solo fellow Matibedi, SABC News, Johannesburg. Hello, my dear. My name is Ian Wessels, and I is the anbieter of Loslip on RS4. Ja, van die goed in my leven waar ek werkelijk spuit is, is dat ek nooit die voorrecht gehad om vir u te ontmoet nie. Dank u so wonderlijke voorrecht van inspiratie vir ons allemaal en as meer mense u voorbeeld wil navolg, kan ons gewis van die Republiek van Zuid-Afrika die Republiek van Ethiopia maak. Mag u een jaar van vrede, geluk en voorspoed beleef. Alles van die beste. Kiri hundate Mandela le satsin lahe la tsualo a ke tike ha monate a bone tse di ntsenga ata di le mosetla re molaka le tsa mashono lo bo phelo bo botle e ka a ka iphumana ntjo kholo ke bo phelo bo botle ha ka phela hantle ha ba monate re tla thaba re le maafrika borwa sugoluhle kuwe matibom khulu we are now going to cross over to zerast where the official uh, um, rally was today to honor Nelson Mandela. This is where you saw earlier the Minister of Arts and Culture, Paul Mashatile, speaking, delivering an address on behalf of President Jacob Zuma, who is currently in China. Criselda Lewis is standing by in Zirast. Over to you, Criselda. Thank you very much, Avuyo. Well, the festivities are just about starting here. Lots of excitement, a lot of music. Everyone here to enjoy with Tatu Nelson Mandela, wishing him a happy 94th birthday. But what would that be without a surprise from the little ones? Happy? Celebrating with uh, Tatu Nelson Mandela. Happy birthday to him from all of us here at the SABC. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chriselda. You can see that uh, excitement uh, is starting to build up now here. Uh, there's going to be a cultural program that is going to get underway. Uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of entertainment, music. They've brought in artists, they've brought in DJs. So people are going to have fun in the true spirit of a birthday party. That's what is going to happen here now. But for us, that's all we had time for. It's time now to go back to the studio in Johannesburg with the hope that uh, everybody got the message that indeed all of us, in order for this country to be united and be cohesive, we all have to follow uh, Mandela's examples and his values of helping each other without uh, expecting anything in return. Vuyo, it's back to you in Johannesburg. Well, Tommy Dixon there from Zerast as well as Chris Selda, Zosie Lewis. Well, we're now going to go to uh, Kunu, where, of course, earlier um, our, our reporter spoke to Mrs. Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Here's what she had to say. <laughs> Earlier, we were uh, Mrs. Winnie Matigizela Mandela arriving um, at uh, one of the projects. Uh, that were being unveiled today. The plaque you're seeing there um, is, she's being accompanied, of course, by um, members of the ANC Youth League, Julius Malema. Um, well, Nelson Mandela's former wife, Winnie Matigizela Mandela, an expelled ANC Youth League president, Julius Malema, handed out toys and painted an orphanage at Ngailini in the Eastern Cape. Matigizela Mandela has in the past visited uh, the Mzamomhle Mzam, orphanage where she promised to help the institution and that's why she was there today. They are accompanied, as I said, but also by suspended secretary, uh, ANC Youth League Secretary Cindy So Magadra and spokesperson Floyd Shibambo. Uh, from here, Winnie Mandela moves on to her hometown of Bizana in eastern Pondoland. For now, let's go back to Dinogana, where 
Tammy Dixon and Criselda Lewis are standing by. Uh, before we go there, or on our way there, we'll leave you with a bit of music. Stadium here in Ceres. This is where the official government celebration is underway, celebrating the 94th birthday of Tatum Nelson Mandela. I'm sure everyone out there is doing their 60, uh, 67 minutes. If you haven't done your 67 minutes there at home, I suggest you go out and do that. He sacrificed 67 years for the betterment of this country. Now, let me just touch to Mamu Nomsa. Mamu Nomsa, uh, Mamu Nomsa, uh, who's also celebrated up in Amsanje, uh, with Tatum Nelson Mandela, we are Bafa, we are 94 years old. Especially in Jengoba, the representative ECT for Child Childhood Development, Siabona, Sasboni, Lukutuku Pendukile, we are in it, Kutukutasa Valile before, but now, at least his social development, he has Nikis, he grants education, he has oil. Even if we are in a deep rural area, at least they are reaching us. They are going to look seven sun. No, even though when I go this up to this country, but they are they are they are voya and they are wish to to sing a lundi so. But I want to know how And then for for I want to know zero to six years. They are bullying us to the top. If we have a kung and sung we, that is saying we are going to learn Nation at Langa season, ECT is the Uncle Mutaba Oinke, especially as Sipunaku ECT. Mamma, Mamma, Ungachi, when I'm climbing in Tonanga Yens, Wapem Santa Africa, to move forward in the Golem Seven or so when we went with Tatu Nelson Mandel. Dinati, where Connors in Dow and Jenga Bumatasi, Tipu Valley, is called Lavantana Banazo, Ikrachi, Dinati, the service development. Department of Social Development. Even linear because as you crash, as you register, the America, we are going to buy as you put it from deep rural to urban area. And get the standard is in Ghana. What are at least about Zambu register as you crash, as you put it to rural area because at the end of the day, the bank of Antwana, but need a education, and then he have Antwana. See. We saw good Tabazali, Jamaba, the advocate Lamanton. But don't at any stage who comes and look at Baku Jamaba says good Tama results and a good one. So if my people was to buy support, but Savanton, Siba develop it. I think we'll have a bright future. As much as I have good priority. Well, as you can see, a lot having to say about development in this area. There's a lot of music here. Everybody's starting to dance. It indeed is a celebration of a world icon. Let's see what's happening there on the stage. Uh, 
Spana lebo cristali, rotori manior, and then gitu malar rotori bana ba mukhay wabon. Ano kaya ba rebelize Mandela fela se fela nyan? Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Come on. Aw na ya chanali na letan tusa gir. Nelson Mandela. Come on. Nelson Mandela. Aw na ya chanali na. Arie, arie. Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Aw na ya chanali. Amar lete ngoy. Barri, ar ar tsoe lenta. Well, Zirast, they're about to get into the groove. And uh, in the true spirit uh, of uh, a celebration, they are about to get down and dance. Well, in a bid to help raise funds for the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital, the SABC came up with the Madiba Project, which saw South African musical greats and ordinary citizens recording two songs to mark Madiba's 94th birthday. Here's the video of the song, Happy birthday, Mandela. Well, first of all, let me just say a, a happy birthday to, to Madiba, to Nelson Mandela. Now, we, you've had many, many birthdays. And let me say this, that every birthday is important, is significant, because you indeed are the most significant South African, certainly the most significant South African of our generation. Eta ika ma uti ches kameza from ukozi FM sereje ni ako Mondays to Fridays mo three gak six tamama siji waza na bangad ba ako namtana jenga si usugul kulu lasti kona ge happy birthday guta ta umadiba aglo na gaji kawele lasti ningzam Africa kuto yi kawele lasti Africa yonga ana yi kawele umsha ba wonge ningzi umsha ba wonge chigele le kuto namtana jenga siji usugul kulu lasti jige kona ge happy birthday senga tunga kula ukule uza ukoko be jenga ba uvelo kule lego manje. Well, some of our DJs there paying tribute to Nelson Mandela. Well, that's all we had time for today. We continue to watch our programs, our evening bulletins, uh, which will be bringing you the latest of, on what people were doing to honor Nelson Mandela on his birthday. From all of us here and from the crew, we say happy birthday, Dada.